Hello friends, welcome again to the tetrahedron chemistry classes. So, in the combined structural problems, uh, today I am going to discuss two very important problems which uh, have been asked in the December 2019 net examination. Okay. So, uh, one of the question is actually not uh, related to the combined spectrum problem, it is simply based on the carbon 13 NMR, but second problem uh, you can see or you will see in, uh, little, in little later that uh, it belongs to the combined spectral problem. So, what is the problem you can see here? What it says that the correct match of the 13 C chemical shift value in delta ppm for the pyridine molecule is you have been given the four sets. Okay. Uh, this is the set A, set B, set C and set D. So, it is a very straightforward and very easy question, but you have to apply uh, your basic organic general organic chemistry concept to know the correct values here. The question is quite simple and uh, I think the value of uh, this question was 2 mark. Okay. So, how we can actually uh, write the uh, ca correct chemical shift? For this, you have to draw the uh, resonance structures for pyridine. So, I am drawing the resonance structures and putting the positive and negative charge when it is required okay, based on the movement of the electron. So, this was your original structure of the pyridine it is a heterocyclic compound. Okay. So, uh, see uh, though I have not made the uh, carbon NMR spectroscopy, interpretation of carbon NMR spectroscopy, but I will do uh, when actually I will have little time, but right now I am going to solve a problem. So, what will happen? See this lone pair which is present uh, here, this double bond, this will go to the nitrogen atom and you will have the resonance structure for this one. Okay. So, here you will have the resonance structure and this resonance structure will have now two lone pairs of electrons just like that and this double bond is untouched and a positive is over there because it has uh, the uh, double bond had shifted from here to nitrogen. Okay. And in the next case what uh, you can do this can come here. So, you will have your another resonance structure for this pyridine molecule okay. and the resonance in the resonance structure the lone two lone pairs would be on the nitrogen atom and this would now become double bond because this bond has shifted and this will get the positive here okay, and this is again. Now, in the last step what you can do to draw the final structure, this electron pair you can move over there and then you are having this particular structure nitrogen with two lone pairs. Okay and a positive is here and you see just you have these structures. Now, check uh, the charges. See this is what positive charge present at this position and this position is basically your C 4 and this position you are having this positive charge which is your C 2 okay. and this position you are having th uh, this charge this is again your C 2 okay. and uh, this is your C 3 actually basically right. This was your C 2 and this is your C 3. So, this is your C 3. So, here you should know positive charge will show the electron deficiency electron deficiency. That means, electrons are not there actually at the, at the particular positions where you are having the positive charge. When po electron deficiency is there, then there must be what? D shielding. There must be D shielding because uh, electrons generally shield the protons, okay. but when the electrons are not there, that means shielding would not occur. This means the D shielding is happening in that case. Okay, and whenever you are having the D shielding, then you have the downfield chemical shift. Then you will have downfield chemical shift delta ppm value. Downfield means higher value. Higher value. So, where you are the, see the places or the positions of the carbon where you are having the positive charge, it simply means that mean it is a deshielded and this will have the higher chemical shift. Now, you can see uh, in the structure here 
this uh, the question asked in that manner this was c2 this was c3 this was c4 so now c4 is also having the positive charge as you can see here c2 is also having the positive charge as you can see here so these two must have the higher chemical shift while c3 must have the lowest chemical shift c3 must have the lowest chemical shift because there is no positive charge that means electrons are there okay so we, we can call it that shielding is there at the c3 position and so what you can write you can write uh, because electrons are there it is shielded shielded means your signal would be actually at lower values of delta ppm so uh, check here you see c3 is uh, in the in the case a your uh, c3 is 124 which is the lower value okay and in that case you can see c3 is 150 so this cannot be your answer you can opt out this one c3 is again your 124 this could be your answer and in that case c3 is having 136 which is the intermediate value this cannot be your answer so very easily you can strike out option b and option c now you have to select between option a and option d option c which is correct because bo in both the cases you are say you are uh, you are observing that uh, your c3 is having the 124 ppm uh, values right now you have to decide uh, whether c2 will have the higher value in delta ppm or c4 will have the higher value of the ppm so in that case you can see if you go for the c2 so c2 is positively charged and moreover it is near to the electronegative or nitrogen this nitrogen is electronegative nitrogen i am writing en nitrogen so due to this electronegativity further d shielding would occur further d shielding would occur okay and then further d shielding would occur that mean the chemical shield uh, chemical shift will go uh, uh, far more downfield right so c2 your c2 must be the most downfield signal why first it it is it is having your positive charge and second it is just next to the electronegative atom both actually causes electronegative atom and positive charge both causes d shielding and d shielding means the very far downfield shift that means the very high value of the delta ppm now check where where you are having the c2 as higher value so in that case you can see option uh, in option a you are having this 136 which is not very high but option in option c your c2 is having your uh, this 150 value right so this is the correct answer the option c should be the correct answer so you can uh, you can check here for c2 for this particular one you will have 150 ppm okay and uh, for c3 you will have 124 ppm and for c4 you will have 136 ppm so this is how you can solve this particular problem but you have to apply a little bit of concept here right so now moving to the next problem what it says okay now this problem actually uh, is a four marker question and asked in the december 2019 examination and this question is based on the combined spectrum problems where you have been given uh, your carbon NMR, your proton NMR and your IR. Mass is not given here. Okay. Now, this question actually in the first instant it seems uh, quite tricky to solve because all the see if you go for the proton NMR spectrum, if you check the proton NMR spectrum, so more or less all will actually show uh, the same kind of the uh, uh, proton NMR spectrum. So, how to make the difference? So, key here is very very important how we can differentiate. So, I am telling you the key look at the carbonyl value look at the value which is carbonyl very very important say when you are having the ketone carbonyl group when you are having the ketone carbonyl group so it will have the value of your chemical shift 200 to 220 ppm okay and when this uh, carbonyl group belongs to the ester Okay, guys. Ester means just like that, right? So ester carbonyl will have this value somewhere around at 160 to 185 ppm. So ester will have the higher uh, chemical shift. You see 160 and uh, sorry, lower chemical shift 160 and 185. But ketone will have the higher value for this one. And you can see here in your question itself, the value is given here. Right, what value is given here? You see here carbon NMR, 
right this is 197 it is given for 197 okay and it is also uh, given this 165 so how to actually differentiate between them so in that case you see 165 basically belongs to carbon single bond oxygen and 197 actually belongs to the carbon double bond oxygen okay and you know this carbon double bond oxygen one, uh, 197 means it is more near to the ketone when it is more near to the ketone that means your answer uh, you cannot select uh, ester as the correct answer so what straightforward you can do you can strike strike out the options where the esters are given so this is your ester moiety but ester should have the lower value for this carbonyl so you can strike out first option now go for the second one this is again your ester moiety Okay, and this ester actually uh, again uh, you cannot select as the correct answer. So, on the basis of this carbonyl, uh, uh, carbonyl chemical shift value, you can strike out the op options of the ester. However, you can argue this carbon single bond oxygen is there in that case because it is CH3, right? But this is not that de shielded. Okay, because the, it is not that shield uh, that de shielded, it should be somewhere around 100 ppm but you have been given this value as 165 ppm okay so now you have to select between see this is your ketone this is your ketone okay and uh, this is also a ketone so i out of these two you have to select the correct option where c is the correct or the d is the correct okay so if you if you if you want to solve then you can straight forward write uh, for this carbonyl you are having the value at 100 sorry 197 ppm okay and this is you see this carbon and this oxygen this carbon is basically your 165 ppm because it is de shielded by oxygen and it is also the sp2 carbon here you see this carbon is basically sp2 carbon this one and it is also de shielded by the oxygen so it should go uh, very far downfield and it is uh, showing at 165 ppm so on the basis of the carbon nmr option c is looking the correct op on option in that case and one more thing which you have to actually keep in mind uh, what uh, what that thing is you see i can show you say i'm shifting this little bit up in that manner and you i'm writing your structure again see this particular one So, this was your carbonyl and this is your CH3, this is oxygen, this is CH3 again okay? and then you are having the bonds here. So, in that case you see this is methyl singlet, this is 3 proton singlet and this methyl is also basically your 3 proton singlet, but this should be the downfield signal. Why downfield? Because, because it is directly connected with the oxygen and this CS3 should be upfield. This should be upfield. Why? Because it is near to the carbonyl group and that ca this carbonyl group is not that electronegative when compared to the oxygen. Okay? So, two singlet you are having and both should be actually the downfield, but this one is little upfield this methyl is little upfield when compared to this methyl okay and you can you can see here in your uh, example this uh, three proton singlet right so uh, if you follow my cursor here this is the three proton singlet at 2.8 ppm okay and that 2.8 ppm basically is this one so you can write 2.8 ppm for this 2.8 ppm okay and for this one it is quite downfield so uh, for this you can write 3.8 ppm okay while in the c and next very important very important feature here which uh, can give you the idea here uh, that feature is actually your uh, this coupling constant value coupling constant value so uh, so this is very important to note that okay see uh, i am writing here actually when ortho coupling is there when ortho hydrogens couples then the value of the coupling constant is somewhere around your 7 to 10 hertz 
and uh, for meta coupling you are having somewhere around 3 hertz okay and for para coupling it is very very less 0 to 1 hertz so in that case you see here 8 hertz and 8 hertz are given in the benzene system that mean two ortho hydrogens were coupling in that case so if you if you put the hydrogens over there right you, you can write here say this is your h and this is your another h and this is your h this is your another h so you can write it as h a you can write it as h b so this would be again your h a this would be again h b okay why because this molecule is having the plane of symmetry from somewhere here so this is the plane of symmetry this is what p o s plane of symmetry when plane of symmetry is there that means this h a is roughly identical to this one chemically I, they are chemically equivalent okay but not magnetically okay and this is h b this is h b so what will happen this h a would couple to h b so it will give a doublet similarly this h b would couple to h a this will also give you a doublet so doublet for this one doublet for this one so you can see here this is a doublet and it's a two proton doublet why two proton because this h a and h a they are identical both sides on the mirror plane similarly this h b and h b both side on the mirror plane they are identical one okay so that's why uh, they are the two proton coupling so 6.9 and 7.9 these are the chemicals if you know if you want to know which which one would be your 6.9 and which would uh, which one would be your 7.1 so this oxygen because it is directly connected with the oxygen so your h b would be your 7.9 ppm values while your h a would be your 6.9 ppm so in on the basis of this spectral studies this option c is looking the correct answer for this one right so if, see this molecule is not having plane of symmetry when this molecule is not having the plane of symmetry so you are having the different hydrogens here so you can write it as h a h b h c and h d four different hydrogens are there so here you see the ortho coupling would be there then meta coupling would be there then para coupling would be there and you will have the complex uh, splitting pattern but complex splitting pattern in that case of d but uh, is, it is showing only the doublet doublet so the most probable structure for this one is actually the option number c so this is how actually you can uh, solve the problem based on the combined spectrum problem and this is the problem of your csi and net examination the level of this particular question is little higher uh, than the problems which i have discussed in my previous combined spectrum problems uh, right so uh, uh, because uh, the, those questions were elementary type but uh, very very important for your uh, examination point of view to learn the concepts actually but in that case you can see here in the present example uh, this question is quite complex and you should know the see for the for such questions to solve you should know the value of the chemical shift right uh, carbon chemical shift so because in that case you see the carbonyl carbon actually which belongs to the ketone and which belongs to the ester makes the difference here okay this is how you can solve the problem based on this so that's it for today guys if you like the explanation if you are understanding or grasping the things kindly subscribe the uh, tetrahedron chemistry classes please uh, like the video and do share with your friends also okay so that's it for today guys thank you thank you very much